Well, as you can imagine, there's only one story in town when it comes to the newspapers this morning. Let's run through the front pages. The Sunday Times splashes with, at last, their crowning glory. The Sunday Telegraph has a souvenir edition with a picture of the king and queen on the front. The Observer, King Charles III, his crowning moment. The Mail on Sunday again uses a whole picture wipeout. The look that says, darling, it was a triumph. The Sunday Express, their headline simply reads, happy and glorious with a picture of the king. And then the sun on Sunday goes with crowning glory. Again, a picture of the king holding the orb and the scepter. And the Sunday mirror simply says King Charles III. Should anyone be in doubt as to who was crowned yesterday? Now, I'm delighted to be joined by Eve Pollard, editor of the Sunday Mirror and the Sunday Express, formerly and a Fleet Street legend. We call you that. Eve, I know your own grandchildren call you a legend now. They call me Leggy. That's because you are one. <laughs> now, let's go through some of our favourite highlights from the newspapers. Sure. The Telegraph front page picture, it's an interesting one because it's, it's, there's a degree of informality about it. Yes, but it's them. I mean, many of the pages, and as you say, you've shown, have the king looking very, you know, orb and scepter, very serious. This one's got Camilla and Charles i.e. the new king, the new queen, smiling, yes. looking happy. We love a smile, don't we? We love because a smile. At, at certain points yesterday, people weren't really smiling. No, and it was very serious, and it was very momentous, and it was very religious, and it was all the things a coronation should be. But at the end, all of our shoulders went down. We thought, they're happy, they've yes. made it, it's happened. Am I alone in finding some of the imagery slightly surreal, just having lived through the Princess Diana era, having remembered some of the headlines about Camilla back in the 90s yes. and early noughties, there she is with a crown on her head, St Mary's crown, on the Buckingham Palace balcony yes. with her own children, uh, her own grandchildren. Holding her train. What do we think, Eve? Well, I have to say I always thought it would end up like this because I believe Prince Charles used to describe her as non-negotiable. And I thought at some stage he will inherit the crown and she will be there with him. So I just always thought this would be the moment. I never thought it would be so spectacular. There will still be some who say, well, not my queen. You yeah. know, that they're very fond of Princess Diana still. I understand that, and people feel like that. But this is a couple who've blended their families. That was the other interesting thing. Her grandchildren, not the earls and the dukes yes. and all the rest of it, were carrying her train. And one of his grandchildren, Prince George, looking divine. Did a great job, age nine. Did a great job, age nine. He's going to be a very good king in his own time. Isn't Although he? Princess Charlotte, leading the way with Louis, was also super cute. She was oh. playing the role of big sister and then Kate's mini me with great aplomb with that with headdress. The headdress which was the and a little white. On. I hope that Alexander McQueen made that too. You'd be proud parents, wouldn't you, being William very, and Kate yesterday? Very. I thought They've done a great Great job. Louis was taken out at one point. He was taken out. I did notice that because if you've had a four or five year old, yes. that's just too long. I thought it was a miracle he was in the service. <laughs> miracle five. he was clean and know, tidy. Amazing. Now, um, we talked about the crowning moment of the day, that balcony picture. It's an advert for blended families. It's also sort of an advert for broken families in the sense that there were two The spares. people who weren't there. Yeah. What did you make of Prince Harry's general performance yesterday? Well, we all worried about Prince Harry coming, but he wasn't stuck behind a pillar. He was stuck behind Princess Anne's rather large hat, but I think that was an accident. Let's pretend it was an accident. Yes, but it's was... interesting that when <laughs> the Duchess of Sussex was at, was it the Platinum Jubilee? Yes. She was behind a candle. She was. I mean, these things are meticulously planned, but perhaps <laughs> not that much, Eve, I don't know. I don't know if they're making thicker candles now either. but. He was talking, he was, he was having a chat, a really good chat with Jack Brooksbanks, yes. uh, Eugenie's husband. I know. And they obviously get on very well. And so that was fine. He looked very, very unhappy, I thought, when he walked into yes. the uh, abbey. But then he saw somebody and said hello. Yes. And then he sat down and he was fine. Apparently that was a military person. It was one of the recipients of Victoria or George's Cross, but that's, somebody told but me. But that's good. Nice. That's brilliant. But and you then, don't want to be... Do you want to be in the cheap seats with Jack Brooksbank? When well, you're the son of a newly crowned king. But Jack king. Brooks, Brooks, well, what was sad is wouldn't it have been a magical moment if he had come up and kissed his father in the way that William did so beautifully and his father said, 
Thank you, William. With a really nice little face on, I yes. thought. I think that would have been a trip too far. I mean, he says his brother and his father are trapped in being royal. Well, I know who I felt was trapped yesterday. Yes. It was Harry. It was Harry. And off he went. He's waving and smiling at Heathrow Airport, flying back to Montecito. Rushing to a four-year-old's birthday. Well, hang on. I mean, shouldn't we be rushing to four-year-old's birthday? Well, we should rush to our own four-year-olds. Yes. Absolutely. You're not quite so keen on some other people's. But gone in 28 hours. I mean, it, it, also, and, the, the and disconnect. feel like hell. The comms disconnect was exemplified by the lip readers saying that even Brooks Bank didn't really know how long he was staying and when he was leaving. So clearly there'd been no communication at all no. between the Montecito side of things and the monarchy side of things. And of course, I can't think of a good reason for him to come back to Britain. I mean, last year we had a, a lot of, you know, we had the, 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 the wonderful thing that the Queen had. I can't remember the name. <laughs> the Jubilee. Jubilee. That's it. That's right. And then we had, sadly... It's her, been her, a long week. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very sadly the funeral. I can't think of a, 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 a royal thing in the calendar that means he has to come back this year. And the more they never get together, the yes. longer this will go on. Should we just quickly mention the Duke of York in these garter robes? He's perfectly entitled to wear them because sure. although he's been stripped of his military and royal patronages, he hasn't been stripped of this order of the garter. No. Um, should he be in the robes? I mean, it looks like the king's sort of softened on him slightly. Well, I think probably somebody said, and there probably is a rule saying he has them, he's not been removed from them, so he wore them. But, of course, I didn't hear it, but I'm told he was heckled as he came down the mouth. Yes, he was booed, which is probably poor form. Yes. Having said that, we did see the very best of British yesterday, Eve, as is ever the case. People in their ponchos. <laughs> I liked a lady I saw who was in a Union Jack poncho. You can't I get like better that. than that. Yes. And I suppose the point is really... Did the palace slightly undercook this? Because it was all rather apologetic and, oh, turn out if you want to, but we really don't mind. And if you want to pledge allegiance, you can, but you don't have to. Well, the pledging allegiance thing was much too far. I think everybody would have stood up and said, God save the king. Any more, most of us can't remember. I think the palace played it quite right. It was a very, very diverse crowd in the Abbey. Yes. Probably will have upset some people, but will have made a lot of people think, he's my king. I've seen somebody who looks like me in the Abbey. Yes. I've seen someone who's done great works in yes. the Abbey. Um, I've seen the leaders of all these faiths in the Abbey. And I think it probably homogenized the yes. whole thing. Um, and I love the fact that the British spirit wasn't dampened by the rain. I mean, it rained at the last two coronations, so, you know... So that's it's, on, it's on, obviously. Let's just have a final word about the unexpected star of the day. Oh, yes. Penny Morden. Penny Morden, centre stage, holding a sword, looking regal. I she mean, that's had the done only way... She press-ups to prepare for that sword holding, apparently. I imagine so. It was probably very heavy. She looked like the female equivalent of Robin Hood, or...? Well, what she looked was solid, and we're so used to women in the news, having to be thin and rakish and all the rest of it. And she was a real woman. But I mean, she upstaged all of the politicians. She did. And, and she was there at every turn. Oh, there's Penny Morgan Can you imagine away. how annoyed some of those politicians were know, watching Rishi, the telly? Rishi looked rather glum and sidelined by comparison. <laughs>